Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. This is our last class or podcast, whatever you want to call it, Mm -hmm. in our book, How Not to Read the Bible by Dan Kimball. Thanks so much for joining us these last few weeks. Clark and I are just going to talk a little bit about the postlude. Is that what it's called? Yep. And kind of mainly just... um, what did Jesus do with, um, you know, the Bible, with the Old Testament? How did, you know, he deal with it? Yeah. And because that's a huge um, encouragement for our hearts when we look at, you know, some of this tough stuff that we have been. Mm-hmm. And so we'll look at him just kind of throughout the Bible, him, um, Old Testament, New Testament, and then him holding on to the scriptures and yeah. how they're important to him. They should be important to us. Definitely. And before we get there, we want to do a yeah. real quick recap as to where we've been. Yeah, that's So important. if you have your Bible... Your Bible. If you have your book, <laughs> open it up to the table yeah. of contents. And if you're just driving or walking and listening, I'll try my best to be mindful of that. But his premise throughout mm-hmm. the whole book is that the Bible was not written to us, mm-hmm. but it was written for us. Mm-hmm. And when we enter into the context of the scripture passages with that mindset, yeah. it's really helpful. Mm-hmm. And it's really liberating, actually, <laughs> when it comes to understanding what's happening and who are these people and why. Mm-hmm. And so the first part, he said, never read a Bible verse or you'll have to believe in magical unicorns. Mm, that we was talked <laughs> about the Rahim Hebrew word and how that talks about, is it a unicorn? Is it a rhino? I'm not sure. What were the people thinking about that um, at that time? Mm-hmm. Kind of transitioning to part two, which is specifically dealing with the Old Testament laws. Kind of the, yeah. the odd laws with shrimp and beards and eating and... Um, cleanliness, that mm-hmm, kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I will never forget the laws and some of the examples he uses when it comes to like odd laws we still have in the United States today. And yes, there's that always was so a backstory helpful. to why you have some obscure law. Yep. Like in Kentucky, I think it was, you can't have an ice cream cone in your back pocket. The donkey, yeah, right? They're, they're no, still, they're still horses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can't put, a farmer can't put his donkey in a bathtub. Yes. Um, there's a few other ones, like a, a, a barber or a beautician yep. cannot like sing or hum while they're shaving you. Yes. I'm sure someone lost their life because of that or something <laughs> happened there. Um, so when it comes to the Bible, though, there are odd laws and God put them there on purpose. Yes, to specific people. Mm-hmm. And so it was helpful for Dan to flush out like, yeah. okay, what are things that we need to hold fast to now today in 2022? Yeah, and like, don't boil a goat in its mother's 21, milk. Well, sorry. the reason why is because a lot of these odd laws yeah. dealt with Canaanite laws mm. and how they were um, to their demons, their their fertility. That um, was such a good clarity. You know, yeah. that they worshipped. And mm-hmm. so he's saying the reason why they're there is that God wants his people to be separate, to be set apart. Mm-hmm. And when we read, obviously, some law about boiling a, a goat in its mom's milk in 2021, yep. you're like, this is crazy. Yes. Right? And so, unfortunately, sometimes people use the Bible to try to invalidate the Bible. Yeah. And that's that's not fair. Yes. So, the next part was yeah. part three, section three, and that was all about, you know, is Christianity a boys club? And so how... Um, how has God treated women? What does mm-hmm. God think about women? And so I think that was helpful too. I mean, just look at like God's heart um, for women throughout yeah. all of the Bible and how even though there's some confusing things, I'm so glad Dan brought them up in the New Testament specifically. We talked about yeah. Timothy and in the Corinthians too yeah. um, and just kind of flushed out what um, could have been going on there contextually. Yeah. But really God's heart, you know, this huge theme for women mm-hmm. throughout all time, for all time, going all the way back to Genesis chapter one. Yeah. So that was, um, yeah, that was just super yeah. helpful. And I appreciate about, some yeah. of the background on the laws again, w- dealing with like what we would read as slaves, but like what was really happening yeah. back then and how it's actually the exact opposite. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like God's oceanic grace, yeah. his, his <laughs> massive grace. It's his grace that mm-hmm. he's extending to protect people. Right. And calling some of the men to be responsible. With what was going on. Yes. Yeah. And it's actually like an act of love from God. Even Mm -hmm. though we read the Bible and it's like, wow, why would he say that? Yeah. Put that in here. Like women needing to marry men. And yes, totally. Part four, be Cal's favorite, talking about the dinos. Yeah. (laughs) T-Rex, Triceratops, Ankylosaurus. We know them all here at the Corver household. But talking about science. Yeah. And how really Christianity and science do not have to be at odds. Yeah. Um, and how sometimes there's often strong affirmations and connections that build up, you know, there's one creator. Right. Come from one man and one woman. Yep. And those kind of things. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that was know. super helpful too. I think um, part of Dan throughout this book too, but really in this, that section, he was hammering in like, let's ask hard questions of the Bible. Like mm-hmm. some people think like, oh, you know, you need to just believe it. And that's, that's, uh, you know, that's not a wrong mentality, but he kind of 
pushes in a little bit more. And yeah. he does that later on and say like, Dig let's, in. let's not be lazy with the scripture. Let's be good stewards and let's be deep thinkers. And so, yeah. um, that was in the science one too. And then part five. Yeah. Yeah. Dealing with kind of does Christianity claim all of the religions are wrong mm-hmm. and exclusivity and inclusivity and mm-hmm. how, yeah, Christianity is in an exclusive, um, I guess religion or, you know, spiritual, um, walk with God because Jesus says, I am the way, I am mm-hmm. the truth, I am the life. Yep. And again, I guess the one of the main points coming out of that podcast, mm-hmm. my hope is for people to see that nearly every single group, concept, thought, philosophy, and religion is in fact exclusive. Yeah. It's just, are you enthroning somebody or something in your heart that's going to bless you? and bless other people around Mm you. Mm -hmm. And we see when it comes back to Jesus, he does just that. Mm -hmm. I loved when Dan kind of broke down how really Christianity is a huge gift for a ton of reasons, many reasons, but a huge thing that that separates it is it's... um, not a pathway. It's not a journey where you are constantly needing to earn, to prove, mm-hmm. to you know, be good enough to get to nirvana or to get to that afterlife place. No, yeah. Christianity said you're not good enough. Yeah. And um, I, God, came to you to rescue you. Yeah. To be that way. And so I think that was just a huge distinction to like here. Let's differentiate a little bit. For and sure. So that's good. And last part dealt with violence. How you looking at God's grace and compassion yeah. actually over centuries, and there's still some of those passages that are hard to swallow. And yeah. then today we're ending again by, like Bobby said, looking at how did Jesus handle the scriptures. So how did yes. Jesus handle the scriptures? But also where is Jesus in the scriptures? And then, mm-hmm. you know, where's your heart at as you read this book, as you listen to the number of podcasts? Mm. What are you leaving with? Oh, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, we're on page 293 if you have your book, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but he, I appreciate it because he lines up a lot of scriptures dealing with Jesus and scripture. So Matthew 4, Jesus quoted the Bible when he was tempted. Luke 4, yep. Jesus read from the Bible when he started his public ministry. Mm-hmm. And then Matthew, Mark, and Luke, multiple times, Jesus used Bible scripture passages and yep. arguments to defend his identity and who he was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Jesus frequently quoted scripture during his teachings. Uh, Jesus used the Bible to talk about the future and the end times often. Jesus quoted the Bible when he was dying on the cross. Mm. Jesus taught from the Bible after he was resurrected. And so there's a lot of, so many examples. There's (laughs) even more than that where Jesus is quoting scriptures. Yeah. 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 I love what Dan said when he opened this chapter too. And he said, you know, he listed all these odd things. Like he listed, Mm. you know, some of the... um, the Old Testament laws and he listed yeah. about, you know, the flood and he listed about, you know, not touching the skin of the dead pig. And he knew all of these things and still loved his Bible. And I feel like that was just like, oh, that encouragement to my heart. And then really specifically in Matthew four, um, cause what's going on there is a huge like war in the spirit realm, in the supernatural, where yeah. Jesus is in the desert and he is literally warring against Satan, where he comes and he tempts him. And yeah. he's, you know, he's been fasting for 40 days. And what Jesus does, you guys, this should encourage you so much, it encourages me so much with the power and the authority that's in this written text, the Bible. Yeah. Because Jesus, if you think of him being fully man, being fully divine, could have done so many things, just like boop. Done. You get sneezed over. on him and yeah. whatever, flicked him like a fly. And he uses, he says, it is written. It is written. It is written. Reach it, sister. And so Reach it. Just, that's just straight up authority that Jesus is saying, like, I believe the written word of God so much that even when I am most tempted on earth, and I could come back in so many different ways. I'm going to come back with the written word of God. I'm yeah. going to come back with the sword of the spirit. And so you were encouraged by, I mean, we read in John 5 that uh, you should diligently study the scriptures, mm-hmm. but then the road to Emmaus. Yeah, Luke 24, that's a mm-hmm. passage I really hold close to my heart because this is when Jesus is resurrected. Yeah, <laughs> He's starting to reappear to people, and there's some disciples walking on this road, and they're really sad, still confused, mm-hmm. and grieving. And Jesus appears to them and starts talking to them, and they don't yet know who he is. And in Luke 24, it talks about how he eventually reveals himself to Mm -hmm. them, but he talks to them about how the prophets and how Moses and how the Old Testament law, all of the scriptures concerned and were about Jesus Christ, every single part. (laughs) And and that's so encouraging, especially when we read some of these odd Old Testament passages. But what I love in the Gospels is when Jesus points back to specific instances Hmm. and says, like, I was there. 
that's talking about me. Hmm. And so when he's talking to the Pharisees and everyone's mad at him in John 8 and he's talking about Abraham and how Abraham mm-hmm, was saved by mm-hmm. faith and how Abraham looked forward to the day of Jesus and how Abraham saw it or believed in it and had faith in it. Yeah. So Abraham looked forward to Christ where you and I look backwards to Christ, hmm. but we're still saved by Christ and saved by faith, hmm. just as the Old Testament people were. Yeah. And I love at the end of that passage, I think it's in verse 56, John 8, when Jesus is talking to them, he says, I am. Uh, right. And <laughs> labels. Us, yeah. yeah, for us, it's like, I am, okay, what what's the big deal there? Mm. And he's going back to Exodus 4 in the burning bush when Moses mm-hmm. asks God, who's speaking to him in the bush, you know, I go to, when I go to Egypt, who am I supposed to tell him sent me? And God yes. drops the, I am who I am. And Jesus is quoting himself. And that sets everybody off. That's but the Jesus big... <laughs> is basically saying the Old Testament mm-hmm. is not only about me, I'm in it. I was there, yeah. Oh, I was there. Mm-hmm. That's. I mean, are we going to talk about that now, Jesus in the Old Testament? Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Well, because there's, you guys, it, there's this wonderful children's Bible that's called, help me, Clark, by Sally Lloyd-Jones. Uh, the Jesus Storybook Bible. And you've heard us talk about it before. Mm-hmm. We know many of you read that around the dinner table. It's so helpful with especially young kids just to understand that Jesus is all throughout the Bible. Yeah. And there's a story of Jesus and the disciples when he calms the storm. And yeah. they're out on the lake. And, you know, he's sleeping and there's a storm raging and the disciples are scared and, you know, wake Jesus up. So they do. And he wakes up and he he says, peace, be still. He calms the storm. And in the Jesus Storybook Bible, the way that she words it is said, um, Sally Lloyd-Jones says that the wind and the waves remember the voice of Jesus. Yeah, they recognized it. They recognized it. it from the beginning because who was there in the beginning? Who created? Who divided the waters? Yeah, the word it was of God. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's the word. And so there's so many other examples, but I love that one. And our kids too are just like scratching their head like, wait, what? And the disciples, when they said like, who is this man yeah. that even creation obeys him? Yeah. like, oh, well. The maker of the wind and the waves, baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's good. Ooh. Again, like uh, the John 8 passage where Jesus says, mm-hmm, I am. Mm-hmm. I love John 1 and how John is talking about in the beginning was the Word, and the yes. Word was with God, and the Word was mm-hmm, God. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting is John's using that word logos there because that's a word everybody knew of and had an idea of what it was, and he basically redefined a a cultural, mm. well-known word, logos. Mm. And he says, actually, it's somebody, mm. and going back to Jesus. Yeah. And so Jesus holds on to that tightly, too. Um, I want to take a minute to plug another book. So plug now that it. you've read this, and if you're wondering, <laughs> oh, what should I read next? What do what do Clark and Bobby recommend? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I have a book for you. And this is one of my favorites, definitely in my top 10. And it is entitled Jesus on Every Page by a guy named David Murray. And he specifically goes mm-hmm. through the Old Testament and sees not only that the Old Testament is about Jesus, but how Jesus Christ is in the Old Testament. Uh, his doctrine, the theology is so on point and helpful to honor God and see that Christ is, in fact, in all of the Old Testament scriptures. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I learned about reading that book is Mm -hmm. all the times the Bible talks about the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord. There are times it says uh, an angel, grammatically correct, an angel of the Lord, or it says the angel of the Mm -hmm. Lord. I actually believe, so this is debated, I'll give you that. You don't have to believe. This is not like a um, salvation issue, but I do believe that the angel of the Lord is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And in it, it lays out a number of reasons why. Mm -hmm. I took a screenshot of my notes on my phone. And so the angel of the Lord claims to be God, claims Mm. divine authority in Genesis 16 and in Genesis 22. Uh, The angel complains, uh, uh, um, says he is a distinct divine person. He also has divine authority. Mm -hmm. He exhibits divine attributes. He performs divine actions. He receives divine worship. People worship him as God, and the angel accepts it. Like, if you're not Mm -hmm. God and you're allowing people to worship you as God, that's problematic. (laughs) And lastly, he's identified as God. And so, long story short, when you're thinking, you know, how does Jesus handle the scriptures Mm -hmm. and all that? He's in the scriptures, and he's speaking to us in the midst of them. Yeah. And if you're looking for another book, check this out. It's good. (laughs) I like it. I love it. That is good. I love what Dan says there on the bottom. We're kind of all over the place. This is 294. The more we learn from the Bible, the more we learn about Jesus. Jesus. So if we want to continue to see, you know, who Jesus is, or we want to hear about him in the Old Testament, we want to, you know, read about him in the New Testament and understand like his character qualities and how he would live today. You know, what would Jesus do? Mm -hmm. You got to read your Bible. 
yeah. because that's what's going to inform you. <laughs> you got to yeah. do it, guys. Yeah. And so that's one thing. Really, as Dan continues on, he says <clears throat> in the middle of page 295, reading, reading your Bible is not just for information, but it's for transformation of mm. my mind and of my heart. Because we've... Um, you know, if you've grown up in the church, you have probably been around your Bible for a little while. I've been exposed either, you know, at Sunday school or through your folks at home. Um, you know, so 30 years later, you can slip into that mindset of like, oh, I know that. Yeah. I know that story or I've heard that, you know, I know. Well, for sure. it's not all for about sure. knowing, though, buds. You know, he talks about head knowledge and differentiating head knowledge from heart knowledge and um What's so amazing about the Bible that is that differentiates it from every other text in the world? I mean, every library. That's what Dan calls yeah. it. Is it because it's in, it's Holy Spirit inspired? Because it's the living, breathing Word of God. It can actually transform us yeah. as we. I like how stay he says close that. that it. Is it information to you, or is it leading to transformation? Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, on page two ninety six, he took a screenshot. I think it's of a tweet. I know, it's so good. And it's really helpful. <laughs> the quote says this. To most Christians, the Bible is like a software license. Mm -hmm. Nobody actually reads it. They just scroll to the bottom and click, I agree. I know. I mean, let's be real. I do that to so many things. I'm scrolling through a yep. subscription or trying to buy a flight or something like that. I'm like, right. did I you agree. read the 12 pages of fine print? I'm like, no. <laughs> Hope it doesn't come back to bite I me, but I'm clicking, that. I agree. <laughs> I but what he's saying here is oftentimes we do that with the scriptures. Say, yeah. I'm mm -hmm. a Christian. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. That's good. Easter, mm -hmm. awesome. Thanksgiving's cool. Christmas is really fun, you know, mm -hmm. I agree, but, but not ever actually like reading through it, opening up and processing. Mm -hmm. So head knowledge and information or heart transformation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what's it going to be for us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the importance of that continues on just past yourself, because yes, we want to be transformed, but when we're transformed in Christ's likeness, like we we tell people about it. Yeah. And so Dan talks about that too in the very next like paragraph. He's talking about how he was. I think I think this guy was an atheist. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And uh, he's talking with him about like this man's experience with other Christians. And this man literally says this, that he would be more open to Christianity if Christians were able to have thoughtful discussion about yeah. why they believe the things they believe. He was frustrated by the conversations with Christians who didn't seem to know why they were Christians or what they really believed. And so that's just an encouragement as well. I think when we, when we read this, like, Ask the hard questions. This yeah. whole book has been about that. Mm -hmm. Ask the hard questions and come, you know, come to conclusions, not so that you can have all the right answers and not yeah. so you can appease other people, but just so you can have that conviction. We just read yes. about that in Thessalonians, yep. that when you are in Christ, when you, you know, um, when you come to the Lord and accept the gospel, there's, uh, you know, emotional experiences that we can have in worship. There's deep conviction saying, I believe yeah. this as a core part of my value and who I am. And, and now I got to study and remember and be yeah. reminded of the reasons why. For sure. Yeah. For sure. I think kind of going back to the first podcast, breaking down Barna's stats on how often we read the scriptures. If yeah. the scriptures are confusing, you should ask yourself, how often are you reading them? And it's not mm -hmm. that that will necessarily give you all the right answers, but when you read in community, Gain it's going to be yeah. become more familiar to yeah. you. And I think for me, just even thinking back to the last couple of weeks mm -hmm. and after reading this book, what, are, what am I taking away? I was prepping for a sermon, and I had one of those passages in the Old Testament where uh, the ark was on this cart, and the, it stumbled, the oxen tripped, and so this guy reached out and mm. touched it and got zapped dead, basically. Uzzah, and, right? Uzzah, yeah. yeah. And you're like, Second Samuel 5 and 6, you're like, Naturally, poor Uzzah, and oh, what a crazy, mean God. But yeah. when you actually look at it within the context of the Old Testament, God had given them specific instructions on how to handle his presence. Mm -hmm. And it's not supposed to be on a cart. You're supposed yeah. to carry it. And already they have had, uh, you know... Um, disciplinary actions taking place before that because they've mishandled God's presence. And we're not talking about passing the remote, passing the pizza, give me my drink. It's You're talking about God's presence. Yeah. And there's an invitation to obedience. And when you're obedient, you find freedom. And so that's kind of what I, I got at. And as I gave that sermon, a lot of this book is what was coming in and through me. It's yeah. because like, man, God, you, you call us to be obedient. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful that you know it's best. So hmm. anyways... I love reading the Bible. I love reading <laughs> yeah. it with you. I love talking to Did you it. about it. Mm -hmm. This has been good. It's been a good eight podcasts. I know. Any closing guys. thoughts on your end? 
No, be encouraged, be challenged, be encouraged. Um, I, uh, it's been a gift for me too. And, uh, like we've started saying this as well. So these extra, we started the podcast saying, read this with us and learn with us, Mm -hmm. but stay in the word. Yeah. Like don't let those supplementary supplementary things. Yeah. Yeah. Overshadow that. So thanks for following along, you guys be blessed in the rest of your day, the rest of your week. And, um, yeah, we will, uh, see you Sunday worship. Yep. Bye bye. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. Have a great day.